Good morning. We're going to get into God's Word today. We're going to worship God together. We're going to pray together again. It's a great way to start the day. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you to be with us this morning. We ask you to meet us wherever we are, different places around the nation, different places around the world. And yet we know, Lord, that you are there. Your Holy Spirit is with us. We ask you, Lord, that whatever our frame of mind, however we woke up today, that we will get what we need from you. Because you are what we need. You are who we need most. Be with us, Lord, as we worship you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's sing this song and, and worship God. My life is the pen of a ready writer. I am the furnace and you are the fire. a place with a glorious theme. My heart has been stirred by the love of a matchless King. Love alive in me. Lord, you
Jesus, my Savior, lover of my soul, your sacrifice be. Just one. 
delicious wine Savior come Jesus is my Savior Lover of my soul Your sacrifice be thank you for this time that we can worship you thank you for the technology but more than that thank you for your spirit that's with us everywhere we go we trust you lord we want to encounter you today as we get into your word in jesus name amen amen so if you've been following this devotions you'll see that we've been talking about being a christian witness and really we, as you can tell we, we're Yes, we care about what God's doing in our hearts and we ask God to minister to us. But at the same time, we also believe that God is doing something in the world around us. And as Christians, we have a part to play. And a big part of that is being a Christian witness, meaning telling people what God has done. That's all it is. We don't need to have all the answers. We don't need to be the experts. We just are witnesses of what God's doing in our lives, what God has done in the past. And that's what trusts us, uh, causes us to trust Him to do it more in the world. Today I want to share from Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 to 6, and it says this, Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. There's lots that we can unpack here, and it's a great reminder for us that a big manifestation of what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus, is in our speech. How we speak to one another. How is our speech? Our speech to our loved ones at home, our speech online, our speech in all different kinds of communication. How does it show that we are followers of Jesus? Does it just mean having religious verses that we text all the time or 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 four words? Does it mean that we can't talk about things that are that everyday people encounter, like what shows they're watching or the problems we experience? That's a very shallow way of thinking of it. This verse tells us how Christian speech is to be differentiated. Number one, it says walk in wisdom toward outsiders. I pray that for all of us, whatever comes out of our mouth, it will have the mark of wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom isn't just about knowing things. It's about knowing something, yes, but how and when to say it. See, so many times Christians, we emphasize knowledge. We emphasize knowing the verse. And a lot of the conversation degenerates into verse slinging. Where's the wisdom? Where is the, the discernment? Where is the guidance of the Holy Spirit? I can think of so many times in my own life, uh, in conversations with friends, even with, with, with my wife and with my son, that I'll try to use a position of knowledge where I'll say, I know this, I know better, but maybe I was technically correct, but there was no wisdom. There was no guidance of the Holy Spirit there. Before we say something, let there be wisdom. It's, it says specifically though, walk in wisdom toward outsiders. How are we talking to the people in our life who need to know Jesus? Do we just blast them with Bible verses? Blast them? With, or, or is there wisdom? Is there a personalized uh, element there? Someone asked me on social media recently. He was describing a, a friend of his who's obviously very passionate about a particular issue. And uh, this person and, and, and this Christian have different views. And so now this Christian wants to share about his faith to this, this friend who's very passionate about some issues. 
And he said, how do I share it when they obviously don't want to listen because we have different views on the issues? And it took a while of questioning and, you know, talking back and forth. Till finally, uh, we arrived at the conclusion that why do you need to attack your friend on those issues? Why don't you take a different route? Why do you need to argue about the areas that you already argue about historically? Why not ask your friend how he or she is doing? Why not offer to pray for them in a way that we all know that everybody needs right now? In other words, walk in wisdom. Secondly, it's just making the best use of the time. We, make, we walk in wisdom because we make the best use of the moment we have. And this is especially relevant for right now because this season of the pandemic is a season of great crisis, season of uh, economic turmoil, is a season of fear and anxiety. It's also a season of deep spiritual hunger. People are hungry. People are looking for answers and they're not getting it in the usual places. And so some people are starting to think, maybe it's God. And I hope that the people of God will be found making the best use of the time. Not binge watching a TV series, though it's not wrong to do that for, for some time. Uh, not caught up in endless debates and arguments that aren't winning anybody's hearts, but making the best use of the time. I'm seeing friends and relatives who are open to hearing the gospel. Because what else are they going to do? There's so many great shows right now that talk about the gospel. These could be great conversation starters. Please don't mistake forwarding a show or YouTube uh, link or a Netflix recommendation to someone for preaching. It, it's a good start, but hopefully it can con continue a conversation from there. Making the best use of the time. Thirdly, it says, let your speech always be gracious. Ay. Let your speech always be gracious. And this is one of the defining marks of Christian language, of Christian speak. And it's sad to say that many people who claim to be Christians, to be representing God, you wouldn't find grace. And that's true for me. There have been many times where my speech hasn't been the most gracious. Why should Christians be the most gracious? And how can Christians be the most gracious in our speech? It's because we experience grace. We experience grace from God. There's a, another uh, part in the Bible, in the book of Titus, where uh, Paul gives Titus instructions for how to speak, being gentle with people. And, and people say, okay, well, how, how can we be that gentle? And he says, but because you've expounded the grace of God yourself. That's why you can be gentle. Having gracious speech doesn't mean we don't call out sin. It doesn't mean we don't give criticism or constructive uh, suggestions. That's part of it. But what sets grace apart is that it's not hopeless. When we give feedback and we say, you know what, you can do better at this, it's because I believe in you. It's because if you will receive this correction, and if you will turn to God at this time, things will change even though it's late in the game. That is a gracious way of pointing out mistakes. There's a difference. Is there a difference with us? Is there a different flavor with how we speak? Is there a different tone? Or do we sound just like everybody else? Walk in wisdom. Make the best of every opportunity. Make the best of the time. Make best use of the time. Always be gracious. Fourthly, season with salt. Ah, there's the part about the flavor. Let your speech always be gracious. Seasoned with salt. What does that mean, seasoned with salt? It means a few things. Number one, it means there's a different flavor. Does our speech as Christians have a different flavor from the world around us? Is there reason to trust the words of God? Or is it just part of the noise, the cacophony on the internet, the chatter of people? It's indistinguishable. See, people are looking for life. And they'll find the words of life from God and the people who share that. When many of the people left Jesus and stopped following Him, He turned to His disciples and He said, um, well, Do you want to leave also? And Peter said, Where will we go? You're the one with the words of life. Ah, wow. What a powerful picture. I pray that our mouths, our social media, our phones, whatever we send out, are places for words of life. Now, how do we get to be words of life? It's because we experience the life of God. 
Our words could be like a drink of fresh water to someone who's thirsty. See, Jesus' plan for us was that we would be fountains of living water because we have drunk from the well of living water, which is Him Himself. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt. Lastly, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. I want to highlight that last part, each person. Every person is different. See, what doesn't work online now are all these blasts, you know? What happens is the people who already agree with you just echo what you say. The people who disagree with you will fight you or just be turned off. Now is the time for personalized communication. Now is the time to send someone a message. Maybe even today you can sit down and say, Lord, can you put someone in my mind who you want me to remember? And he will. And God will drop someone on your mind. And, and he's done that with me, with, with uh, college classmates, with, with friends, with relatives, with people I haven't spoken to in years. Just like, how are you doing? I just send them a message. Hi, how are you? thought about you today just thought I'd ask how, how are you doing how you ought to answer each person now as I end we might be saying that's a lot to do wisdom make the most of every opportunity gracious seasoned with salt talk to each person hey who's helping me who's talking to me that's true and this is why Christians, followers of Jesus, have the best opportunity at this time. Because we don't follow a God who just tells us, do it, be my witnesses. No, we have a God who says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, learn from me, learn my ways. Experience this first. Then you will be a witness. See, Colossians 4, before that, the, the, all the previous chapters are talking about, this is what God's done, right? This is how God's changed you, right? And because God's changed me, now I can do this. Let me read one of those sets of verses. Colossians 3, 1 to 4, chapter before this. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with Him in glory. See, when Paul gives his instructions to, 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 to speak gently, to walk in wisdom, he's not saying, No, he's saying, Don't you have life already? Isn't Christ your life? Isn't Christ your hope? Haven't we been raised with Him? Isn't He the promise of things to come? And because He is, when we get anxious, when we get scared, when we get irritated with the people around us, we have to remind ourselves, Lord, show me again who you are. Remind me again who you are. This is why these devotions are important. It starts the day with us drinking deeply from the grace of God, experiencing deeply the grace of God, and then we go out and we share that to other people. The words of life from our scriptures will come into our hearts and will come out of us. And we will be witnesses. The first step is to drink deeply from God. I think it's a good time to apply that now. I want us to get into worship again. And before we even do anything for God first, let's pray. And say, Lord, fill us up. Lord God, we're here to worship you. We want to do things for you. But before that, Lord, we want to experience you first. And Lord, thank you that before you ask us to do anything for you, you want to do something for us. You want to refresh us. You want to redirect us. You want to guide us. You want your peace and your love and your joy to settle in our hearts. So Lord, we ask you to do that now. Even as we worship. Strengthen us, God. Let's worship Him now.
devotion And Lord, you have my heart Jesus, thank you. That this isn't just something that we can get when we go to, to Sunday service, Lord, but this is something we can get from you every day because you are available every day for us. Lord, we ask you to move in our hearts even now. Holy Spirit, we ask you to drop names and faces in our hearts and minds. Be quiet now. Let the Holy Spirit do that. If you've got a name or uh, that God reminded you of, let's pray for that person. Lord, we pray for our friends, our family members, our colleagues, our acquaintances, our office mates, whoever, if our enemies. Thank you, Lord, that while we are apart, your Holy Spirit can still be with them. Lord, use us to be witnesses to them, to speak in wisdom, with graciousness to speak with speech that is a different flavor from the rest of the world so that they will find through our words of life or they will find you the true life that they're looking for thank you Lord that even though in this time of quarantine we have an important part to play as Christian witnesses and you're going to use our words use us Lord in Jesus name Amen well God bless you have a great day. Always remember the words we say will have a huge impact in the people around us. See you.